And we are live. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the King County Canvassing Board. We're going to call to order today's meeting. That's December 16th, 2020 Canvassing Board Certification Meeting for the November 3rd, 2020 General Election Recounts for the State Senator Legislative District 5 and the United States Representative Congressional District Number 9 for precincts Kent 47 0842, Kent 47 25 68, Federal Way 30 3021, Mercer Island 41 0775, and Seattle 37 1895. I am canvassing more <laughs> member Julie Wise. King County Director of Elections. And with me on today's virtual canvassing board meeting, I have Kevin Wright, our Chief Civil Deputy Prosecuting Attorney, and Carolyn Bush, Chief of Staff to the King County Council. We are always staffed here again today by Gerilyn Hampton, our Ballot Processing Manager. This meeting is live streamed via the King County Elections Facebook page and will be uploaded to YouTube channel after this meeting. Up next, Gerilyn's gonna give us an overview of the process the team went through for these recounts, as well as provide an overview of the counts for the recounts of this election. Gerilyn, the floor is yours. All right, thank you very much, Julie. So we have two recounts, as you mentioned, that we'll be talking through. Uh, we'll start today with the uh, legislative uh, district number five senator contest. Uh, this contest found itself in a mandatory hand recount range and so the requirements in Washington state to be uh, in a mandatory recount, uh, we have a machine recount uh, threshold, which means the uh, two candidates are fewer than 2000 votes apart and less than half, a, half of a percent separating uh, the candidates. That gets a contest into machine recount range. And then our legislative district number five Senator contest actually was in the secondary threshold, which is fewer than 150 votes difference and less than a quarter of a percent um, between the two candidates. Uh, and then we'll be in a hand recount. And so uh, our two candidates, Mark Mullet and Ingrid Anderson ended up being 57 votes apart uh, when we certified the election uh, at the end of November. And so we started the process uh, to prepare ourselves for the hand recount. We had to pull 100,000 ballots out of over 5,000 boxes and then uh, sort them into over 180 different precincts to prepare for the count. Uh, and it's important to know what is included in a recount and what is not included or uh, considered during a recount. So recount is the process of retabulating the votes as cast, things we're not doing. We are not considering questions of voter registration. We're not considering questions of voter qualifications. Uh, we are not reconsidering voter intent that was previously determined. I did some digging around because I had been saying this is the largest recount I had been a part of, um, but looking at our recount archives, this is the largest recount that King County has done since the general election back in 2004. So this is quite a large recount for us. Again, since 2004, we haven't done a larger one than this legislative, um, uh, fifth legislative district senator contest. So a little bit about the schedule that we followed, the staffing that we used. As I already mentioned, we had 100,000 ballots to pull. We used 100 staff to actually go through this ballot pulling process. Again, it was 5,022 boxes we had to open and sift through to find the ballots with this contest on it. We started that process on Tuesday, December 1st. And with all of the help that we got, um, from our full-time staff here at King County Elections, as well as a handful of short-term temporary staff that we brought in to help us through this, we were able to complete the pulling of the ballots, that, partic that particular piece of the process on Thursday, December 3rd. Uh, after the point at which we had pulled all of the ballots from their boxes, then we have a whole uh, additional process where we have to sort those ballots into their individual precinct boxes. So, as I mentioned, we had over 180 different precincts we were sorting our ballots into. And because we were doing the, because we did complete the recount by precinct, we had to do that sort. We were able to complete the sorting of the 100,000 ballots on Monday, December 7th. Uh, we then turned around and started our hand tally on Wednesday, December 9th. We used two 19, uh, 
I'm sorry, we used 19 two person count teams uh, to go through this count. Uh, our count teams started with this uh, legislative five senator contest at the same time we started the Cong congressional district number nine US representative hand recount that we'll talk about in just a few minutes. We started those concurrently for the count process. We had a lot of observer engagement, which is great. We had 39 unique observer visits throughout this process. Um, and so as we went through this hand count process, we did identify 23 distinct variances in seven different categories. So I'm gonna go through them with you. Um, and so important to note that if we find a variance, there will be two changes out of that. So for example, if we find something that was counted as an undervote and it should have been a write-in, your undervotes will go up by one and your write-ins will go um, down by one. Okay, so the first category, we had two ballots that were identified as not um, in ledge five. So these ballots should not have been in the contest. So we had one ballot that was uh, accidentally duplicated to Quail Precinct instead of Quail, Pre Quail Creek Precinct. Quail Creek is in ledge five, Quail is not. So it got erroneously duplicated to the wrong precinct. And then there was one ballot that was, the physical ballot was a legislative five ballot, but it should have been duplicated to a ledge 41 ballot. So that can occur when we have voters who receive a ballot and then complete an on, an on time change of address. We send them a new updated ballot with, their, uh, with the correct races and measures that they're eligible to vote on. If that voter still turns in the first ballot, which has the old stuff they're no longer eligible to vote in, we hold those ballots for quite a long time, hoping to get the updated ballot. If we do not get the updated ballot, we are required to duplicate um, to the current address precinct and only allow the voter to vote on things they're eligible to vote on. So that's how these two um, um, pieces were needing to be removed from the recount. The next uh, category is not a hesitation mark. We had a ballot where there was a vote originally counted as an undervote, but in looking at it closer, it actually uh, should have been a vote for Ingrid. So we made that adjustment. So Ingrid got a vote. Next category, we had one ballot where a voter filled in a target area. They put an X over it. The team accidentally called that a correction. This is one of those more complicated and confusing voter intent rules. But the voter intent rules tell us that if a voter puts an X over target area, but they do not select a secondary target area, it shall be counted as a vote and not a correction. So because that was an error, we made that update and gave a vote to Mark. Next category, there was a ballot with a single correction and an unbubbled write-in. It was originally counted as a vote for Mark, but it became a write-in. So filled in a target area, they lined it out. They did not fill out a secondary target area, but they wrote on the write-in line. So that should have been counted as a write-in. So we made that update. So Mark lost a vote and it became a write-in. Next category, there were two ballots where there were unbubbled write-ins originally counted as an undervote. So writing on the line, but they did not fill in the write-in target area. It was missed and counted as an undervote. We changed that to a write-in vote. And there were two of those. Second to last category, we had three ballots with blank bubbled write-ins that we changed to undervotes. So they fill in the target area for write-in, but they don't write anything on the line. The system sees that as a write-in vote. So we missed that when we did our write-in QC. So we changed those from write-in votes to undervotes. There were three of those. And then the final category are single corrections that we ended up changing to undervotes. So a single correction is when a voter fills in a target area for a candidate, they line through it, but they do not fill in a secondary target area. That is still a correction, but the system doesn't easily see those. And so we missed six of those where Mark got the vote that we had to change to an undervote. And then seven where Ingrid got the vote originally that we changed to undervotes. So 13 total for the uh, single corrections that should have been undervotes. And so this last category um, is, an, it is, a, is a circumstance that should be caught by our opening team. It's, it's actually humans that have to catch this. And so we missed 13 of those for ledge five. So that is it for the variances. The winner of the contest does not change. 
And when we started the recount, the candidates were 57 votes apart. At the end of the recount, they were 58 votes apart. Um, Mark Mullet still won this contest. For those who are interested in details, we'll have the, um, uh, the updated precinct level results posted to our website, along with a summary report um, posted to our website as well. That's great, Gerilyn. Thank you for the clear explanation. All right, moving on to our other recount, a requested recount for US representative and congressional district number nine. Uh, we received this request late on Thursday afternoon. So right when we were concluding the ballot pulling for ledge five, we got this requested recount. Um, Julie had already mentioned the five different precincts that we were recounting. Uh, the request came from one of the candidates in this contest. And for these five precincts that we were recounting, we had to pull 2,944 ballots out of 1,306 boxes. We completed the pulling activity for the Congressional 9 recount on Friday, the, December 4th. So we took a day to do this pulling. And as I mentioned, when I was uh, talking about the Ledge 5 recount, we started the hand tally portion uh, concurrently with legislative district number five. We used five count teams of two people to do this count. And for this particular recount, we did not end up with any variance or any changes made to the results. Um, and so no changes there. And again, just as with the previous recount we were talking through, the summary level results will also be posted on our website for people who are interested to see. And that's all I have from our recount situation, but I did want to tell you also, um, which does not happen very often, the deadline came and went for jurisdictions to request to put an item on our February election. I think that deadline was the 11th of December and there were no requests. So for the first time in I don't know how many years, we are not going to have a February election. So we will have to see uh, what comes our way for our April election, but nothing coming in February. And that is all I have for the board today. Gerilyn, is there a, a, any requirement, if somebody requests a recount, is there any requirement that the race be within a percentage or two or within a number of votes? Or if they request it and are willing to pay for it, we do the recount? We will do the recount if they request it, yes. There's no threshold that needs to be met as far as uh, the, the closeness of the race. Great, thanks. And no more recounts allowed to be requested at this point, right? So we are officially uh, certifying today, the, I think for the fourth and final time um, this election. Gerilyn, thank you so much for such a comprehensive report and update and doing a fabulous job managing all of this work all the way into December and bringing 100 staff back into the facility amid a pandemic was um, uh, unnerving for, for uh, many of us. And so thank you so much for leading that work. And thank you so much for our, our fabulous observers out there and our canvassing board. Um, do we have any questions for Gerilyn or for myself? I don't. OK. No, do I. OK. Great, then Carolyn, we'll go ahead and have you read the oath of authenticity, mostly because it's a hard word to pronounce. We'll make you do it. No, just kidding. <laughs> exactly. Here we go. Hold on. Just, oh, oops. Moment. That. All right. Julie, I will now read you the oath of authenticity. Uh, King County Director of Elections, Julie Wise, do you solemnly swear that the recounts for the state senator, legislative district number five, and United States representative, congressional district number nine for precincts KEN 47-0842, KEN 47-2568, FED 30-3021, M-I 41-0775, SEA 37-1895 and supporting documentation of the general election held on November 3rd, 2020 in King County, state of Washington are true and correct. I do. Thank you. Thank you. The next item is the certification of the canvassing board. The undersigned officers designated by law as constituting the King County canvassing board 
for the County of King, State of Washington, hereby certify that this is a full, true, and correct copy of the results for the recounts for the State Senator Legislative District Number 5 and the United States Representative Congressional District Number 9 for precincts Kent 47, 0842, Kent 47, 2568, Federal Way 30, 3021, Mercer Island 41, 0775, and Seattle 37, 1895, held on November 3rd, 2020 in King County, State of Washington. Do. I do. I do. All right, that concludes the certification of our recounts and all of the elections regarding the November 3rd, 2020 general election. Thank you all very, very much. We appreciate you all. There's no further business. I am officially adjourning today's meeting. Congratulations to all of our staff who worked during our recounts. Great job, guys. Yeah, as usual, a wonderful job by all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We will see you maybe for April. Yes, okay. yes. Very good. Have a Happy great holidays. holidays all. Stay safe. Okay. Bye, everybody. Bye.